Hello, my name is Michael Lawley of Eco Innovation. We manufacture the power spout hydro turbine in New Zealand. What's inside this washing machine is the heart of a power spout. And the reason we're outside is it's such a lovely day in Taranaki, New Zealand. I thought we'd start outside before we head into the workshop. What we have here is a smart drive washing machine made by Fisher & Paykel in New Zealand. The motor inside this machine in its original form was designed about 20 years ago. Since then, manufacturing has spread to Ohio in the USA and to Thailand, and it has become a very popular global brand. You may not have heard of Fisher & Paykel, but you've almost certainly heard of Maytag and Whirlpool. They also have smart drive motors inside them. What we're gonna do now is turn the washing machine over and have a look inside. So what we see here is a magnetic rotor. As a motor, this turns the agitator inside the washing machine. It's three phase, and these are the three wires where the electricity flows to drive the motor. If we just simply pull these off, one, two, three, and fit a three phase rectifier and light bulb onto that, we can generate some electricity. So let's do that. So I've just got a few tools, a driver to turn the motor, a three phase rectifier and an energy efficient light bulb. All I'm going to do now is put these three wires in any order onto the three phase rectifier and then I'm just going to put that down out of the way. I'm going to move the wires out of the way, have the light bulb here. I'm going to position the drill onto the washing machine and put in the bulb into a dark little enclosure. So, you can see what a fantastic product a smart drive motor is. It's one of the most efficient permanent magnet three phase motors you can get. They mass produce, they make one every 30 seconds and that's what makes them affordable. Okay, what we need to do now is remove some parts off this machine, take them to the workshop and give you a quick overview of the smart drive if you like, the history of the last 20 years. Okay, so that looked quite easy pulling a smart drive off a washing machine. What I want to do now is give you a quick overview of what's involved in turning a smart drive into a wind turbine or a hydro turbine. Any piece of rotating equipment has two parts. It has the piece that makes it spin. Now, in the case of a wind turbine, that's a propeller. And in the case of a hydro turbine, it's typically something like this, a Pelton rotor. So if we wanted to make a piece of rotating machinery to produce electricity from a stream, what's important is working out how much energy is available in the stream to start off with, because we can't generate more power than what's available. So we have to go to our books and do some numbers, and it can get complicated. But if you look on the internet, there are lots of programs out there to assist you. So the first thing is do the numbers. How much energy can we get from the stream? At what speed will that occur? and that depends on the Pelton rotor design. Once you've done the numbers for that, you then need to match that to a suitable smart drive that runs at the same speed, produces the same watts at the voltage that you want. So there's a little bit involved and it can take some number crunching. And so what we've done over the last 10 years is to write some software to make that process easier for us. But at this stage, I think we should give a little bit of a warning about voltages. We all know that certain voltages are quite safe. And generally speaking, voltages below 50 volts are regarded as safe. And the older smart drive that was available 20 years ago, if we were to spin this at 1000 RPM, we'd probably get about 50 volts out of it. So it's fairly safe. If we were to do that with the latest smart drive, we'd get about 1000 volts out of it, which clearly would be very dangerous to people who don't understand electricity or are not qualified or experienced in its use. 
So that's enough of the warnings. Let's get down to some detail at looking at what's happened over the last 20 years to the smart drive and why it's still such a fantastic product to use in hydro turbines and wind turbines and lots of DIY projects out there. If we first of all take the oldest model, this is approximately 20 years old and originally ran on 15 volts. We have to give names to smart drives so we can distinguish one from another. And this one has a very large wire diameter. It's actually about one millimeter. So we call this the 100 series, that 100 meaning one millimeter. So it's got a large wire and not many turns. You can see these are the three wires that start, one for each phase. They go around each finger in turn and this is the termination point. If we take the next generation of smart drive, these were manufactured sort of seven or eight years ago. They look very similar. You'll notice that there's been some slight changes. There's not as many crack control holes in the stator, but other than that, it's almost identical. The main difference is the wire size. On this model, the wire size is only 0.8 of a millimeter in diameter. So we call it the 80 series. The next in the series, again, looks very similar, but this time you'll notice the wire is very fine and is actually only 0.6 of a millimetre, so we call it the 60 series. This smart drive was commonly used about five years ago, and as the wire size has got smaller, the voltage of operation has increased significantly. So I'd like to summarise the 180 and 60 series of the original smart drive configuration and they have something in common. They've all got 42 fingers, so they're very easy to distinguish. Just count the fingers and there's 42 of them. The next thing you need to do is measure the wire size. It's either one millimeter, 0.8 of a millimeter, or 0.6 of a millimeter. Okay, so that's the stator, the stationary part of the generator. The next part we need to look at is the rotating part. And there's two possibilities. These are the two rotors and either of these rotors can be used with any one of the stators. The main difference that you will see is that this rotor appears to have a lot more magnets than this one. But in actual fact, that's an illusion. Each one of these big magnets actually is made up of many magnets internally. So they're actually the same magnetically. If you were to buy a washing machine today, the type of motor that would be inside it might look more like this. And they're quite distinctive in that instead of 42 fingers, they've now got 36 fingers. And instead of 56 magnets, they've now got 48 magnets. So there's been some changes. And we refer to this unit as what we call the 60DC. The 60 means 0.6 millimeters wire diameter, and the DC means it's decogged. Decogging is very useful if you're going to build a wind turbine. And there's two types. If we look at them side by side, they look very similar. However, what you're after is this one. This one is made from copper, and this one, which is a slightly darker colour, might look like it's copper, but in actual fact, it's made from aluminium. And if you pick the two up, there's quite a difference in weight. And so, we don't use this one at all being made from aluminium. And if you look carefully, you will see the letter AL stamped on the outside. And of course, that stands for aluminium. We only use this in demonstration equipment and also in what we called hand crank equipment, where you might be driving some light bulbs inside a building as a demonstration. But we never use them in hydroelectric equipment because aluminium and water just do not mix. Mm -hmm.